One of the first videos that I made on this channel was comparing VirtualBox to VMware on Windows for your virtual home lab. At that time, I was actually personally using VirtualBox for my own home lab. Since then, I gave VMware another shot and uh, I have updates. Some background, I had been using VirtualBox for a few years leading up to whenever I switched over to VMware. And in that time, nothing had really changed in the user experience or anything like that. It was reliable. I mean, it, I was able to get all the practice and stuff that I wanted to get done. However, I didn't realize that in that amount of time, some significant changes have been made with VMware. For instance, it is open source, but it isn't maintained with nearly the same regularity as VMware. One of the things that I really struggled with VirtualBox was the loading time. It really felt like it just took a lengthy amount of time for virtual machines to spool up and things got bogged down with the more virtual machines I ended up using. Those performance issues ultimately led me to switch to VMware and all of that changed. Now, VMware is available for both personal use and professional use. For personal use, you can use VMware Workstation or Workstation Pro. Now, Workstation is free and it's actually sufficient for personal use, I think. But the Pro version does come with additional benefits like VM encryption, snapshotting, and a few other features that are kind of handy. VirtualBox, however, is open source free and it comes with all those features already. If either version was a human being, they would hit that like button right now. And I think that that means that you should too. Now with the free version of VMware, you can do pretty much anything that you need to do within a home lab. You can spool up as many as you want. They run very efficiently, very quickly. You, I mean, it felt like I was jumping to light speed going from VirtualBox to VMware. In fact, I was able to build up my practice Active Directory lab while working through the PEH. And there's another video on my channel, I'll link you to that at the end of this one, that you can watch my review of that course. VMware also isn't trading the speed for ease of use. It is just as easy to use as VirtualBox. In fact, some of the functionality and quality of life shortcomings with VirtualBox that I was having aren't not an issue anymore with VMware. For instance, one of the problems that I was having with VirtualBox was if I wanted to share my clipboard from my desktop and my virtual machine, it just wouldn't do it. I'd have the option selected, I'd work through all the troubleshooting techniques and it still wouldn't do it. Switching to VMware and it works like a charm. It just completely wins over. Now, one of the perks and just like piece of mind elements with VirtualBox that I do wish was available in the free version is that VirtualBox comes with snapshotting and VM encryption. Whereas you have to get VMware Workstation Pro to be able to get access to those features. Now that being said, you can still back up your virtual machines, uh, you know, using alternate methods, but snapshotting is really just a really nice feature to have and use regularly, especially whenever you're testing things that might break things. Like hack hacking tends to do that. Now, both of these are available on Windows and the Intel-based Mac. However, they are not available on the M1 Mac. That being said, VMware has actually recently released VMware Fusion for the M1 Mac, and that is a nice alternative to Parallels. Now, the reason that VirtualBox and VMware Workstation aren't available on the M1 Mac is because the M1 is an ARM architecture, so it requires a different deployment of VMware or VirtualBox for that matter to be able to run. If you're interested in a review on Parallels or VMware Fusion, let me know down in the comments and I'll put some together. So at this point, VMware and VirtualBox are tied and they also are tied to the price. They're tied to the ease of use and they're tied to the operating system compatibility. I think VirtualBox has the win over VMware with customization being that it is open source and the fact that you're able to take snapshots and provide some level of encryption for your virtual machines. However, VMware wins with just raw speed and power and also at the rate that it is maintained. So this might seem pretty even Steven, right? All I'll say is that I used VirtualBox for a few years and was pretty happy. And now I'm on VMware and I don't see myself going back. VirtualBox served me well in college. It got me through a lot of the personal testing that I was doing and while I was learning about how to do a lot of the cybersecurity stuff that I've, I mean, still been learning. If you're a college student, then VirtualBox or VMware will both serve you well. If you want encryption and snapshotting, then VirtualBox might be good for you. But if you value speed and performance, then maybe VMware is 
good for you. In my personal opinion, if you're wanting to build a larger home lab and run containers in that home lab, then you might wanna prioritize speed and power because that matters. Now, all that being said, if you wanna learn about some of the ways that you can build a home lab, check out the top video and check out the bottom video if you wanna learn about TCM's Practical Ethical Hacking course. And obviously, hit that like button so that way this can get out to new audiences and leave a comment down below saying that my beard is better than makeshifts. I'll see you all later. Bye.